Once you finish the general appearance, then we go to next step. What is the next step? Uh, you will find that actually that there are different uh, books which, uh, which, which actually telling what is the next step. Uh, whether you go ne next to head and neck exam, or you go next to hands examination, or you go next to vital signs. Uh, different uh, like uh, ways of examination. However, you have to choose always one scheme. So uh, what I prefer is that you go next to hands examination. After you finish the, the general appearance, the hands examination will be the next step that I recommend to use to, uh, to go through next. So the hands examination, uh, once, once you start that, of course you will have to look at them. And it, remember that when you start to touch the patient and look at his parts, you have to take his permission and explain to him as you go through. It is not enough to take the first permission and that's it. So once you start to go to the hands, then you, ask, you tell the patient that I'm going to look at your hands. So uh, usually the way of doing that, so you are telling him that you are looking at his hands. It's not, I don't recommend that you just jump on the hands and examine them. Always ask your patient so that he will be with you and he will cooperate. So you are telling him that you are looking at his hands. Okay, and another recommendation is that don't jump on the patient's hand by just pulling it. You ask the patient to give his hands to you, rather. So it's the patient will start to help you and he will start to be cooperative with you. So you look, once you have the hands, uh, remember that you have two hands, not only one, so always look at both. Then you start to look at the most important signs that we look at when we look at, at the hands. Uh, the first thing will be pallor. You look for whether your patient has peripheral pallor at the hands or not. Okay? Uh, why I say peripheral? Because later on we will look at central pallor. Uh, that will be in the eyes. But now the peripheral pallor will be at the hands. And you assume that uh, your uh, hand uh, is actually the standard hands. Uh, and we look at the cyanosis and nicotine stains. Uh, the next slide uh, will show how we look at the pallor. Uh, you can look at the pallor by comparing your hand with the patient's hand. And if your hand is normal, then the pink, the degree of being pink is your standard hand. And you compare it to the uh, hands of the patient. And you see whether your ha the patient uh, hands looks more pale than your hands. And if it is the case, then the patient has pallor. You can look at the pallor from, um, from the palm, and you can even look a little bit from the back. And as you see the slides, you can see the way of looking at pallor in the hands. OK? Uh, after you finish pallor, then you go to cyanosis, and you ask the patient actually uh, to, again, put his hands like that. And you start to look at what we call as the dusky looking color of the hands. Usually normal hands will appear pink, uh, as you see in, in uh, uh, my uh, volunteer here. The hands is, uh, or are pink, uh, and there, are, there is no dusky color uh, of the cyanosis. However, in this slide that you see, that I brought to you, this is a patient with cyanosis, peripheral cyanosis. And you can see the color of the cyanosis being a dusky light or dark uh, blue color. Uh, usually, the peripheral cyanosis will start from the tip of the finger. Uh, and it can advance to actually include all the fingers uh, and even the palm. But still, if it is up to the palm, we call it peripheral cyanosis. So once you finish the uh, cyanosis part, and find whether your patient is cyanosed or not, having peripheral cyanosis or not. Uh, important step in respiratory system is to looking at what we call as tar stains or nicotine stains. Uh, those patients who are smokers, especially heavy smokers,